Hello, and welcome to the Victorious Living Solutions Podcast. I'm Dr. Nakia Young, and we have an amazing show for you all today. We have an amazing show for y'all all the time, but let me tell you something. This one, you are going to love. We are talking about tales of triumph and transformation with the circle of CEOs. And we are going to explain all that that entails in a little bit, but we have some amazing ladies with us and I'm going to give them an opportunity to briefly introduce themselves. We'll start with Shanika. Oh, oh me first. <laughs> My name is Shanika Sadler. I am um, a registered nurse by trade. Um, also the Purposeful Woman Coach. I help women unlock their purpose and step into their God-given divine right. So that's me. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Let's go to Shani. Hi, I am Shani Allman. I am, well, also known as Shani Faye. We're best friends now, so you can call me Shani Faye. And <laughs> I am the podcast producer and the brain behind Shani Allman LLC. So we basically help people. I make it easy for visionary CEOs to create platforms where they can connect with their ideal audience and have conversations that are powerful and meaningful. And so I am so glad that we are all here and that we could do this. When God gave me the idea for a circle of CEOs, like these were the ladies that I wanted here. So I'm so glad that we can be here. I'm truly honored. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I'm honored to have you here. And Thank last you. but never least, we have Monique. Hi, everyone. I am Monique Pfeiffer. I am the founder of Solutions for the Silent and Pfeiffer Coaching and Consulting. I am a mental health therapist as well as a life coach, and I am based out of Columbus, Ohio. Very happy to be a part of this group and very happy to have this conversation with you all today. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So you all, we have some dynamic women in with us today. And just in case you are new here, I will reintroduce myself. I am Dr. Nakia Young, CEO and founder of Victorious Living Solutions, a transformative coaching company and podcast where we empower high potential leaders to crush their goals despite life's challenges and live victoriously. So that is what we do here and welcome to the show. So today, let's get into it. We're going to talk about, we all have different stories of our journey to entrepreneurship. So I guess my first question for everybody is, how long have you been in business? And what did the journey from nine to five to entrepreneur look like for you? And we'll start with Monique on this one. And you would start with me, but okay. <laughs> um, so I started my business in 2016 while working full time. Um, and when I received the idea of being a business owner, I never wanted to be a business owner, had no desire whatsoever. People know my story. I was okay with working for the man, doing what I had to do. But as a believer, when you say, God, not my will, your will be done, what is my call? He was like, okay, you want to know? I need you to do this. And that is when I received the, the name, the idea for Solutions for the Silent, which is a mental health agency where we provide per, per, mm, professional development okay. <laughs> as well as training and speaking opportunities. Um it's been amazing because I just transitioned into full-time entrepreneurship and I appreciate that ladies, but listen, that was scary. <laughs> and it was, I had to come to terms with, yes, this is what I'm going to be doing. Yes. I'm going to follow the will of God. Yes. God has me. And when you see no other way, but to say, yes, you yield because mm -hmm. I mean, if I'm going to ask God what to do and he going to tell me what to do, then I have to yield to what to do. And there, and it's still confusing sometimes. And there's things that I took for granted that I can't take for granted anymore. But I said to someone the other day, I wouldn't change it for anything. To know that you're doing what God told you to do, to know that I am in the business of transforming lives one conversation at a time, to know that I have the opportunity to get someone out of that emotional ditch mm -hmm. to full, to the life that were they were destined to live, that is an honor 
It is a privilege and it really humbles me. Awesome. 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 Now you said there's some things that you took for granted that you can't take for granted anymore. If it's not too personal, can you give us an example? I took for granted that money's going to come in every two weeks like it used to. Yeah, <laughs> with, that part. With very <laughs> limited effort. And when I say very limited effort, I was good at my job. It was mm -hmm. a job that came very natural to me. And I didn't have to worry about, are you taking out the right uh, taxes? I didn't have yeah. to worry about insurance. I didn't have to worry about going and finding clients. I didn't have to worry about any of the things that I just took for granted. I showed up for work. I had a task. I did it. Now I'm in the position where I show up for work. I create the task. Mm -hmm. I find the clients. I do the marketing. I do the hiring. Mm -hmm. I do the firing. So I took things for granted. I took, I think, for granted how hard it really is. Yeah. Um, but then I realized that when you have a team, it's not as hard as it seems, but yes. we all know when you first start out, you are the team. You Ain't are no the team. team. It's just the you. E, the A, and the M. <laughs> yep. Exclamation point. But mm -hmm. again, it's, it's, I am not the same person that I was. I made the tr transition March 8th. It is, you know, now a few months later, yes. not even a few months later, I am a different person and I appreciate the growth. I appreciate it. Amazing. Amazing. I just felt like that needed to be said out loud because we have people who may be listening who are right there at that scary point like, oh my gosh, am I really about to do this? I'm really about to step out. And it is quite daunting at first, but then as you get into it and is so liberating. So yeah, we're going to talk about all of we said tales of triumph and transformation now, to get to the triumph, sometimes there's some some stuff, you know, victory in order for victory to take place. It's a fight first. <laughs> but you know what? I will say those tales are necessary. They are. I wouldn't be who I am without them. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate the triumph and want it daily. But I have learned that in the in the darkest hour is mm -hmm. where I am growing. I, yes. I am spreading. And I know light will come. Mm -hmm. I know it will. It's just a, it's a part of the process. Amen. I will say that, and then Shiny, get ready because we're coming to you next. Um, <laughs> I will say that entrepreneurship definitely, if you don't have a close relationship with the Lord prior to <laughs> starting it, you will develop one. You and, yeah. and God will get closer and closer. It To me, the journey has helped to bring me closer to trusting God like than ever before. Cause you have to, it's like, okay, God, I don't know. This is, I'm doing all that I can do. And now I have to leave space for you to do what you can do. And he always steps in and is like, well, duh. Cause if you could do it all on your own, what would you need me for? So, that part. yeah. Absolutely. So what about you, Miss Shiny? Well, <laughs> Oh, wow. It's been a journey. But before <laughs> before that, there's something that Monique did not say. Um, and we've had this conversation. So if you could just expand on it. One of the conversations we had, you said, I am learning so much about myself in this process. So not only in this entre entrepreneurial journey, do you learn to have a closer relationship with God, but you really learn so much about yourself. Yeah. Um I was I was waiting on you to say that part. <laughs> I, I let you say it for me, friend. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I could be here for you, friend. <laughs> um, but it's so true. I like I started, well, I've been an entrepreneur since I was like five years old, right? I was <laughs> selling candy to my grandfather in the hallway. I love um that. and I just like I have been hustling since I not even hustling, but I've had that entrepreneurial spirit since I was very, very young. Mm -hmm. um, both of my parents were entrepreneurs, so there was no way I was going to get away from it. Although in their mind, they were like, just go get a good government job and, you know, be happy and like make your money every two weeks. But, and I was making the money every two weeks, but the happiness never came. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, it was, it's now that I'm two years into my full-time entrepreneur journey, like, wow, 
two years. Thank you, God. Like, just <laughs> take a minute for that. Um, it's now that I feel the happiest. Even when I, like, am calling one of y'all, like, girl, <laughs> my rent is due. <laughs> I need money. <laughs> Even when I'm calling and crying, like God show up and do something for me, it is still the most fulfilled that I have ever felt because you really ride those highs. Sometimes you ride those lows, but like you said, Nakia, Dr. Nakia, you <laughs> learn something in those moments about mm -hmm. you and your relationship with God. And what I have learned is to just stay in a place of gratitude Yes, because it is so easy to think about what we don't have. Mm -hmm. And in reality, the most important thing is to remember and hold on to what we do have. I am not going to get emotional. Ooh. That's not what we came here. Right. Mm -hmm. We came here to talk about triumph, but, like, mm -hmm. but it's real. It is real that when you are feeling at your lowest, that is when you just have to continue thanking God and praising God and it's been a season. I'm currently in a season. So in full transparency, I'm currently in a season um, where you think you're showing up and you're doing all that you can. And sometimes people are not always 100% happy with that when you decide to make changes. And mm -hmm. I'm not going to get into detail about it, but I've had to make some changes in my business and not everyone was super pleased about it. And it makes you question um, yourself and your, mm -hmm. you know, those, those limiting beliefs start creeping in and you're like, but I thought I did all the good, all the right things. And, yeah. you know, how come they're not like, yeah, girl, we're riding this train with you, you know, to the wheels fall off. Why aren't they happier for me? Um, so it's this taken me to figure out that everybody's not going to be along for the journey mm -hmm. and that is okay. Yeah. Those who are with you are meant to be with you. And those who are not are just not. And it's okay. Losing people always feels like such a, a grieving thing. You're like, but I really liked them. I really wanted to keep them around. I wanted them yeah. to be there at the end of my journey. Um, but it's okay. Like losing people is just, it's a part of like, and not death, not death related. Um, but people leaving particular seasons of your life is just a thing. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. So if you would have asked me this question about my entrepreneurial journey last year, it might have been very, very different than it is right now. Um, but that is just as transparent and as honest as I can be with that response. But I'm holding on to gratitude because God is so good. So, Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. All right, Shanika, you were going to say something um, with, along with what Shani was saying. Do you remember um, it? She said that she, um, about losing people and she thought they would ride with her till the wheels fall off. But it's not their vision. So they're not going to ride with you to the wheel fall off. It's your vision. God yep. gave it to you and only you can see it. So we want, people to, we want cheerleaders, but sometimes they will cheer for a season and that's fine. But remember, we always got to continue to cheer for ourselves because God gave us the vision. They can't see it like we can't see it. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Mm, yeah. Amen. Absolutely. Thank you. So yeah. so I had to learn. I had to learn the hard way too, girl. Yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, so, oh, it's my turn. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. Mm. I don't know. It was just like um, something in me that always say that there's more out there than just um, clocking in and clocking out. Yeah, I'm a nurse by trade, so you know I make really good money. But then that wasn't enough. Like the ha like Shani said, the happiness wasn't there. Like the paycheck came, you know, you pay your bills, you have extra, you may go on a vacation here, but there was something missing. Like I was not living my full potential. Like I was just skimming by, mm -hmm. you know, like just skimming by with the life jacket on, you know, never playing full out. So in um, what year was that? 2019, I decided to take the last thousand dollar I had and um, didn't even know how my rent was going to be paid. But Damn. this was like, I think December, the Christmas, I didn't even care. Like, I'll figure it out. That's how good God was. I don't remember how my rent got paid, but it got paid. Um, and I took my last thousand dollars. I invested in this program. And um, this lady was talking about starting a healthcare staffing agency. And I was like, I can do that. I work with staffing agencies. I'm a nurse. I can do better than them. And I bought the program. And, and four years later, it really changed my life. Like, Damn. I didn't ever ask God for this. I didn't even ask God for like 
all this abundance. I never asked for it. I just asked God to allow me to be there for when my daughters were going to school so I could drop them and pick them up and be at their events and not have to see pictures, but actually be present Mm -hmm. and not have to request the day off and they deny your PTO and you call out or you get in trouble. All I asked God was for me to be able to be there as a present mom because I'm a single mom and all they have is me. And I didn't want to not be there. I didn't want a job to take me away from those important moments. Yeah. But but God was like, okay, that's all you asked for. I'm going to like 10 exit. And he did. And I haven't worked as a nurse for the business is the real world. I haven't worked as a nurse for four years since 2020. But the other day I was telling Shani, girl, I went back to nursing and I was like, I'm going to just Give my company a rest, full transparency. It's a lot. It's a lot to be a business owner. It's a lot on, on you, especially when you're like a female entrepreneur, a single mom, you're, you're trying to do everything. It is a lot. You you know, I didn't want to just, it's either you're focusing on the business or I feel like I have to focus on my family or focus on me. Yeah. It's like, I felt like I could have balanced all three and I, I had to allow myself to step back and reassess that. And sometimes being an entrepreneur owning a business, you have to give yourself that mental break. So I said, okay, I'm going to go back to nursing. It's not for me. It's not. Yes. It's not. <laughs> she like, ooh, about that. It's not how y'all do this. I'm like, like I'm coming there. I'm, I can't, I can't. And I don't want to, um, this is not for everyone. So I don't want to like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to be disrespectful to anyone, but I'm coming there. I'm actually being the CEO and I'm like, this is not how you do this. You should do it like this. This is not how you do this. You should do it like that. <laughs> and they like, who is this nurse? Who is this lady? Um, but being an entrepreneur, but, um, nursing is amazing, but being an entrepreneur for me has really changed my life. It's something that I feel like I was born to do. God brought me to do this and to touch others, other people life, not just to start the business, just to touch other people life. And, you know, it's representation matter a lot and to see like four young, beautiful African-American women, um, sitting here, we're talking about business. Others are going to look at us and say, hey, they can do it. So can I. Mm-hmm. Right. It's going to really touch and inspire other ladies, young ladies, older ladies, you know, so representation matters. So I, I have to look at it. I'm not just doing it for me. I'm doing it for my daughters. I'm doing it for Shawnee daughters. I'm doing it for Nakia kids. I'm doing it for Monique kids. I'm just, you know, so I can't be nothing but a business owner. Nothing but a business owner. I love nursing, but at least then. <laughs> it's not for me I but it has you. ups and downs though but you know yeah yeah all right good stuff ladies so let me I guess share mine and this may be some of y'all podcast listeners may be this may be new to you so I started Victorious Living Solutions in 2018 my son was going on two years old and I didn't have I have three kids now I just had my son back then And I always knew I was a certified life coach before I started the business, but I officially, you know, got the name Victorious Living Solutions and officially started the business in 2018. And it was a good, I felt like I'm one of those people who does a whole lot of different things. And the business was the perfect way to tie in all of the facets of myself in one place. It was like when God downloaded the idea to me, I was just like, oh, wow, this is perfect. Like I can bring all of me to the table. I can bring my on-camera experience (laughs) and hosting experience and speaking experience to the podcast, to doing speaking engagements, all of the things. So it was great. And just my love of helping people. And then I became a mental health coach, just kind of bringing all of this stuff full circle, all of my degrees, experience, job experience, everything in one fell swoop. Now, how I was able to start a business, I used to, before doing this, I was a school teacher and I'm not one of those people, like Shani said, she's been an entrepreneur since she was five. I'm not one of those people where I just knew I always wanted to be a business owner. But now that I am one, I'm not surprised 
at all because the kind of person that I am, being an entrepreneur just makes total sense. I am a very free spirited person. I do not like being confined. I resent any environment that is controlling or confining in any way. Um, it's almost just like a visceral cellular reaction to it. I'm just like, mm -mm. it's almost like I'm claustrophobic, like let me out. <laughs> So it makes sense. Like, I don't think I'm like you, Shanika. I don't think that I could go back to work mm -hmm. and, you know, working for somebody knowing what <laughs> I know, even though it is challenging. There are seasons where everything is firing on all, on all cylinders. And there are seasons where it is literal tumbleweeds, like what is happening. <laughs> but I wouldn't change any of it. I love it. But I would not be able to do any of it without the support of my husband. He saw me going to work and he saw me miserable. Uh, there were some things in education, even back then, when I walked away from teaching, it was 2014. But there were some things in education that I did not like. And it was really traumatic for me, so much so to the point that when I walked away from the profession, I swore that when we had kids, we didn't even have kids yet, we were going to homeschool them because certain things, when once you see it, you can't unsee it. And now 10 years later, it's so much worse. But my husband was basically, he got tired of me crying every day, having all this work to bring home, having all the mental stress I was bringing home. And he said to me, we do not need that money that bad I want my wife back I want my wife happy and you know I got you that was all I needed I that's said, a good help that's a good help <laughs> okay child I went in that room like Kermit the Frog <laughs> let me type my, my resignation letter <laughs> 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 Bye. my man said he got me that's all I needed to hear you ain't got to tell me twice <laughs> <laughs> my man, my man. <laughs> my man, my man, my man, my man, my man. Look, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm about to do, but I know I'm not about to do this. Like when I first <laughs> left, I was like, yay, freedom. Just like, what do I do now? I'm going to be a Zumba instructor. Y'all, I was teaching like eight fitness classes a week, cycling, boot camp, Zumba. Then I did acting and modeling. I was like, I'm going to do that. I was just out, just, just letting my creative freak flag fly until I got pregnant and had to sit down somewhere and then mm -hmm. decided you know thinking about other facets of myself because you can't go to auditions on a dime when you have a baby <laughs> so it was just pivoting and that's when Victorious Living Solutions started but yeah I so my path was a little different from y'all's and I say that to say because a lot of people may or may not know that about me don't quit your job before you have a backup plan. And the only reason I did that was because my husband supported me in doing that. Um, I don't recommend anybody do what I did if they don't have <laughs> a support system to say, hey, I got you while you figure yourself out because I just want you to not go insane. So just thought I'd throw that out there too. All right. So now that we have all given you some background as to how we got into business in the first place, what our companies are. Let's talk about Shani. Tell them about the circle of CEOs because y'all this, I'm so happy I have found this beautiful tribe of women. It has really been phenomenal, but let's tell us about what it is. What is the circle of CEOs? So the circle of CEOs is really community, right? Mm -hmm. It is um, for us, fellow CEO females who are really looking for a place to belong. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurship is very lonely, very, very lonely. And yes, we all want to build businesses on our own and we want to do our own thing. But when you realize how important it is and how good it feels to be able to call someone who knows exactly where you are, either they've been there or they're there now, or they're going to be there in the future, when you can have those conversations, it changes things. And so um, it was after we did, uh, I think it was a New Bay Energy Summit. And I was like, man, 
it felt so good because it, that turned into something different, right? It was not intended, like, it was supposed to empower other women, but really I found it empowered a lot of the speakers. <laughs> and I thought, man, it would be so nice for us to come together and um, be vulnerable and have a place. And I said, well, God, what would I, you know, what would I call it? And circle of CEOs. And I was like, oh, that's cute. <laughs> Jesus, come <through." laughs> So, <laughs> um, so then we just started having these monthly calls and it turned into something really, really important, something that I look forward to every month. Um, we're able to glean from each other, like, where are you at in your journey? You know, have you ever been here? What did you, it's really a sisterhood and it is one of the most profound things in my life. Why am I so emotional today? <laughs> so, like, I can feel the tears, but it is one of the most profound things that are currently happening in my life right now, because I really do look forward to hearing from you ladies and what you have to say and how you're feeling about things and what's going on, how I can help. Um, and so that's just how it started. And, and it was never like, definitely Holy Spirit put it on me. It was never meant to just be us. Yeah. It was always meant to be something bigger than just us. And so I'm excited to say that we are going to be bringing this to more people, that we're going to be opening this up. Um, it is very new. So <laughs> we have not fleshed out all of the details yet, but just know that you will get to join our community. You'll get to be with us and really learn um, and have and have partnerships, you know, and the same way the four of us have come together to have this real sisterhood. And we're again, you know, expanding it for all of you. You'll meet people in the group that you're like, you can call on a regular basis and have conversation with that. You can, you know, that'll be your person. Like that'll be your, your person. And so I'm excited for what is the future of circle of CEOs. And I'm so glad that you all are, are here for it. So. Yeah. I'm excited too. You guys, this circle is magical. And you used mm -hmm. a word that used to feel like a cuss word to me. I'm not even going front. And that is that <laughs> V word, vulnerability. It's like, mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. I don't like it either. <laughs> <laughs> I don't let's, like it either. <laughs> yeah. Let's just camp out right there for mm -hmm. a quick second. Vulnerability, business. What is the connection or importance of being able to be vulnerable while being a businesswoman? Let's go with the mental health therapist, Monique. Uh, I mean, you were yeah. coming, my help us. Of course, girls. <laughs> <laughs> that is your area. <laughs> I knew you were coming my way, but <laughs> you said that. Actually, when Shani was talking, I was thinking, I remember she telling me right away that <clears throat> she wanted to open up the circle to other women. Mm -hmm. And I can remember, and I don't know, I know I didn't tell you this. I was like, mm, I'm not feeling that. <laughs> You did tell me that actually. <laughs> I did. Maybe I didn't. I'm. Yeah. I'm not feeling that. But you didn't okay. Say it like that. But you were like. Mm, but I now mean, you're getting real, real. Like, you're getting real, real. No you're getting new real, friends. Getting the real, real. I was like, mm. <laughs> I'm like, you want me to share me with strangers? Now I didn't share myself with the doctor. <laughs> I didn't share myself with Shanika. I met Shanika in person, so it was cool. But now you want me to open up with these other folk? I don't know girl you playing games but <laughs> i am one to think less of me and more of the the, the goal and i do honestly and I, um to be really serious i think it's important but when we think about vulnerability we're thinking about opening ourselves completely open open vulnerable like i i visualize it as me, I got this jacket on. Me opening up this jacket and you seeing me. Mm. And that me allowing you to see me, then that means you can criticize. You can point out the bad things. You can come from my life, right? You can also say the good things, right? But humans often, we're like, we just working on our insides. And now you want me to, no, no, no. But when it comes to business, you don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. You do not have a choice. 
you yeah. have you have to be vulnerable. You have to be you have to have the willingness to hear no. You mm-hmm. have to have the willingness to sit here. I'm going to go with another company. What you have is, you know, it's just not it's just not the right fit for us right now. And because this is, these are things, our businesses are personal. There are babies. There are, there are, there are gifts from God. We didn't ask for this. Well, some of you may, I know I sure didn't, right? I didn't ask, but um, when God interrupts you, your plans and saying, yeah, I'm going to need you to just open up yourself, be willing to do, that's what it is. And you have to do it scared. Vulnerability shows your fear. Vulnerability shows your insecurities. Vulnerability shows your competence. It shows your strengths and the willingness to allow all those things to happen at one time can be very challenging. That's why it's very important to have people around you who know who you are, who can, who can say, I I've experienced what you're going through. Yeah. And it's not, it's not, not normal. Is that, if that's a word. (laughs) It is normal to feel scared. It is normal. But when I, when I started my business, what I didn't share was it came from me seeing preachers, pastors, bishops committing suicide and it shook my core. And I'm like, something has to be done about this. So who am I? I'm a mental health, I'm a mental health therapist. So let's, let's talk about mental health. Let's get the word out. So that's how it all started. But then when you start a business, Hmm. you know, the SWAT, the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities and the threats, we have to do those for ourselves Hmm. because sometimes we're the threat Hmm. because of our insecurities, because of our lack of being willing to be open, because of our fears because of our mindsets, because of our trauma. Mm -hmm. When we don't work on those things within our business, within ourselves, it can definitely impact our businesses. So that's why you have to be willing to be vulnerable. And what does vulnerability look like? It it looks like me saying, Dr. Nakia, I am really struggling here. How did you manage to work do homeschooling, still be a wonderful wife and still have time for you. I don't have time for my friends, let alone doing X, Y, and Z. How did you do it? Shawnee, you're able to put things together so quickly and so easily. How do you do that? I don't even know where to begin. Shanika, girl, how in the world do you deal with all the challenges of being a woman in a in a male's in a a woman a business owner in a male's dominant role mm-hmm. how do you navigate those those blocks that come because we're all going to experience it but if i never am willing to open up and say these are my challenges i i won't i my business is, my business will not expand mm-hmm. and i started out saying my business is about transforming lives one conversation at a time. I can't transform nothing if I'm not willing to be vulnerable and say, this is where my weaknesses are and my business, please help me. That's so true. Oof, that is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. <laughs> Man, Shanika, you want to add something to that? What has been your experience with vulnerability? Is this something that comes naturally for you or is it just like god please help me with this (laughs) i have a saying i say to myself if um business will grow you business will grow you um i started my business i didn't know what i was doing and i it unlocked so much of who i was hiding it it just unlocked who, who i was hiding like um Hair in the nose, I took it so personal. I was like, why am I taking it so personal? Why do I feel like a failure? What is all of this hidden um, fear within me? My business led me to go to therapy therapy twice because I'm like, what is going on with me? Why can I not succeed in this area of my life? What is holding me back? 
what is, you know, and then I had to unlock like childhood traumas. It was a lot there. So I had to learn how to be vulnerable with Shanika first. I had to learn how to stop hiding from Shanika and be honest and true with Shanika before I can even step back out and say, hey, this the even the focus on the business. When I was able to figure out what was going on with me, then I had to, then I could step back in the business and say, okay, I fixed that. Now I can fix this. So vulnerability means to me is being truly honest with me first, even before the business. What is, what, what does Shanika need in this moment in her life and this season in her life? So the business can run effectively because if Shanika ain't right, the business ain't right. If the business ain't right, the money ain't right. And if the money ain't right, ain't nothing right. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> so that's what I that's what I learned. I had to be truly honest with me. And business allowed me to do that. Hmm. I couldn't hide anymore. Oof. Mm-hmm. Man. Shiny. <laughs> Come on, shiny. You I'm gonna I'm gonna go last because mine is child. I'm gonna need Monique for mine. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Shiny. <laughs> You have to be rooted in identity. Yeah. Because like everyone else has said, business will expose you um, because, and yes, it will change you, but I think more so it exposes you because you were always this person, right? But like Shanika said, you're in hiding or, you know, you're just not open to being vulnerable with people. And so it really exposes every aspect of who you are. And so if you don't know who you are, if you are not confident in I am, and not even just like your abilities, right? Because you're constantly learning new things. So that will be tested. People will say, well, you don't know how to do that, right? That right. person knows how to do that. That's great. I'm so glad that they know how to do that. I'm not there yet. It doesn't mean I don't know anything, right? So I know what I know, but what you know is very different from who you are. And I think as business owners, we put everything together because like Monique said, it's very personal to us. We launched the, like we went through experiences that led us to launch these businesses, right? Because this is something that we faced in our life. And we said, you know what? There's other people who are going through this. I want to help them, which is why it's so personal because it's a journey that we have been on. So when you are looking at being vulnerable and opening yourself up to other people, it is so important to say, but I'm a good person. Mm -hmm. I know why I'm doing this. It is really to help people. It is not just for me. I know that I am brilliant. I know that I do not have to know everything. I know that I am God led to do this and that's okay. Right. That is enough. Not that it's just okay, but Lord, it is enough. Yeah. It is enough. And I may not know all the answers, but he is on my side and he is lining up all the people in position to get what they need to get from me. And so if you are rooted in knowing who you are and why you were doing a thing, then it makes the business a little bit easier because you will be tested at so many places. You will be tested. Mm -hmm. So and there was one other thing I wanted to say, if you don't mind, when Shanika was talking about how going back into nursing, she was like, it is not for me. <laughs> because it is so hard to take that CEO hat off. Mm -hmm. I don't want anybody listening to misunderstand and think, oh, well, that's just a cocky CEO way of thinking. It is not. It is a mental mindset shift that has to happen. And when you go into entrepreneurship, you learn that there's a very different, there's a very vast difference from being a nine to fiver to being a CEO. And that is a process too. But when you become a CEO, it is very, very hard to take that hat off. Yep. It's very hard because- <laughs> Because of that growing and learning yourself, you know so many more things about who you are and what you're capable of as a CEO, rather than when you were just open to taking instruction and like, tell me all the things you want me to do. I'll do it your way. It's such a learning process that it's very hard to put you back in that box. And so it is not, you know, I don't want any, I just wanted to say, I don't want anyone thinking it's a cocky thing. It's I am out of the box now. Yeah. Right. I am out of the box. Ain't no going back in the box. You have better luck so. putting toothpaste back in the tube. <laughs> there you go. Have fun with that. Okay. <laughs> Can so, I add yeah. to what you just said, Shani? Because I just I just had a thought. So we're talking about the trial, the tri the tales of triumph and transformation. And when you were talking about Shanika's experience. She transformed into the CEO. We trans, we are in a transformative experience of being business owners, being 
the CEO, being the founder, being that person, you there's no go back sees. So yeah, like, yeah. Come on. it's almost like when you become a mom, you can't not be a mom. You're a mom now Correct. or whatever mm -hmm. it is. And then everything. And when you really think about the transformative um, process, there is things that you're gaining. And then there are things that are being stripped away from you. Mm -hmm. So um, yes, it's that mindset. And it's almost like it, it'll give you a headache trying to fit into this square when you're round or when you're bigger than it. It, it it's like squishing you down into something that you're not and the awareness yeah. just for you to be aware of that Shanika is so yeah. amazing to me because you know I believe in having a backup plan to a backup plan to a backup plan it's just who I am it's how I was raised you just got stuff stacked and I'm oftentimes thinking like okay what is the backup plan to the third backup plan. And I'm like, can I really do that? Can I really conform really getting small to do something that I've outgrown? Now at the end of the day, if I had to, I would, but what it, what's the cost of it, right? Yeah. What's the cost of us not showing up authentically? There's such a cost to not being who God created us, to, created us to be. When he said, let there be Monique, Shanika, Nakia, Shawnee, he already knew we were going to say yes. Mm -hmm. And he already had a design of what that was going to look like. We're just catching up to it. And now when you see like, wow, this is who I'm supposed to be. It's almost like pain. It's, it brings mental pain and anguish thinking that we would have to compromise not being who he called us to be. Yeah. And sometimes he'll let us go back so that we can see that we are called. This that is who we were supposed to be. That one. Ooh, um, how do you put a butterfly called? back in the cocoon? You right? said what, like, Shani? How do you put a butterfly back in the cocoon? You don't. You cannot. As a matter of fact, you look at the you look at the shell of the cocoon and you wonder how the butterfly fit in there in the first place. Mm -hmm. That is what this journey is. How yeah. did we fit in there in the first place? We were never meant to be there. And now that we are butterflies, how do we go back? It's just, I don't see it happening. <laughs> Which is why it's got to work or it's going to work. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to say something. Going back to nursing was more of a security for me. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I'm a single mom and I have to, like my priority is always, always to make sure that I have what I need to make sure my children are okay. Um, it was hard. I couldn't go back to it mentally. I can only show up mm -hmm. physically. Because my mind is not there. But what I've noticed that I'm a different nurse than I was when I left. I am more compassionate. Um, I, I understand more I'm because I'm a different person. Yeah. I don't fit in that box no more. And it was very painful mentally to even walk back there. I was kind of like embarrassed. I'm not going to lie. Like, mm -hmm. You know, you feel like a little bit of a failure, but I was like, this is a part of my story. This is just the season I am in. I won't be here forever. And it has given me this push to even push entrepreneurship so much more than I did before. I think I took it for granted. I don't know who said that before. I took entrepreneurship for granted. And now that I went back to like clocking in and clocking out, I was like, oh my God, I should never take it for granted like I mm -hmm. did. So now it's just it's just giving me more energy to push my business and push what I needed. So sometimes you do have to go back to be propelled even further. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to be reminded of your why. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, For sure. every morning. Yes. <laughs> that part too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that part too. Yes. And it and it brought me closer to God because mm -hmm. I have to lean more on him now. Like, God, what am I doing in this space? Why am I in this season? What did I, you know, and stuff like that. And it's like when you're in um somewhere that you didn't, you know, you don't know where you're gonna end up, but you really didn't expect to go back to. Um, you have to take it with gratitude and grace because there's a message there for me, for me to go forward. So that's how I'm accepting that. It's not gonna be for long. Listen, like one moment, but listen. <laughs> 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 but I, it's, it's a message um i'm trying to you know it's a message there for me um on on the next 
But I commend you so because at the end of the day, it was about your babies. Yes. Never feel if bad. You didn't have, if you didn't have the yeah. babies, you probably would have kept it makeup. <laughs> I'm looking on that boat still. I'm looking <laughs> on that boat. I love it. <laughs> yes. But some people, they don't think like that, you know? Mm-hmm. And it is making sure. I mean, you as a single mom, your main priority is to make sure your kids are good. Yes. Bottom line, point blank, period. And that's what you did. So, you're a hero to them, not a failure. Oh, wow. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Mindset was killing me. <laughs> yeah, it sure. was. I appreciate mm-hmm. that. It was because you do feel like you have let them down. And when you feel like you let your kids down, it's like, I don't know. It's like that disappointment you can't get over. Hmm. No how but much I think you them and you talk to them and you're like, you know, mommy got to do this right now. I can't pick you up today at school. You should try to work it out because they just used to a routine for the past four years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now we have to break that routine. And, you know, so, you you know, you, you go through that emotional turmoil. But, you know, I talk to them and I explain it to them and stuff like that. But <laughs> you still, as a, you know, you still feel a little bit guilty because you're trying mm-hmm. to you, know, you throw them off their routines. But, that, but yeah. I think, too. And I love to hear that you talked to them. I think it's so important to, because it's a teachable moment. Yes. And I think sometimes parents forget you are raising little people who are going to turn into adults, who are going to face challenges. And how do you navigate a challenge? How do you navigate disappointment? What do you do? That's, That's building them emotionally intelligently and saying sometimes you have setbacks. Sometimes you have pitfalls. What do you do? This is what mommy had to do. It's uncomfortable. It's uneasy. But at the end, we're going to get to where we want to go. And I think we sometimes try to shield our kids so much that we don't want them to know what life is like. This is life. And that's why, think about it. That's why these young folk are mad at their parents because they ain't tell them what life was like. And they don't want to be a dude no more. Right? Mm -hmm. They're like, nobody told me about this adulting stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. I've seen so many things on social media and have heard things like that from some of the students I teach. Like, this isn't what I thought life was. So Mm -hmm. I think just, you know, breaking it down where kids can understand, but we got to prepare them for that. Absolutely. Oh, that's yeah. Thank you. That's amazing. (laughs) <laughs> that's so we're all the we, we don't switch gears into the parenthood um <laughs> but portion it's of the because we are it's still vulnerability it's still vulnerability yes it is it is vulnerable let me tell you <laughs> um especially those of us who me and shiny doing this homeschool thing because now wow. your kids are just around you all the time all yeah. the time so they yeah. see it all i think that that's vulnerable in and of itself. But my husband and I were full-time entrepreneurs. We have longed for this day for like our entire relationship. We were just like, oh, one day we're going to be able to do our business full-time because we always wanted the financial freedom that that would bring, you know, not having your income capped at a certain amount, no matter how many hours you put in and um, all that. Now it happened in a very roundabout crazy way which we won't get into but it involved him getting laid off from his job you said what (laughs) check a previous episode yeah i think you did talk about it i I, I did a little bit yeah it involved him getting (laughs) laid off from his job like a week before christmas just crazy um but we have not when i tell you we have not missed that job the way God has elevated our income has been phenomenal. Um, for our kids, they're so little that my son doesn't remember when his dad got up and went to work every day. Now, I remember because he cried his head off. I'm like, okay, I'm here. What am I, chopped liver? <laughs> like, he used to sit at the window and cry and wave until he couldn't see his daddy anymore. Uh, (laughs) but he doesn't remember any of that. Now all he remembers is that my dad has always worked from home. He thinks that's normal. He thinks everybody's parents are their teachers and work at home with them. And everybody's an entrepreneur. Um, 
So he's gotten to a chance to see us with our lights set up and always doing something creative. It's opened up his eyes to what is possible for him. And he's almost eight. He'll be eight in a week and a half. And he writes plays. He's always creating something. And he's like, I've got a very busy day today, mommy. I'm going to be creating. I have a bunch of ideas. He'll run and get his little notepad and show me his idea for a play he's writing. And Ooh. he's casting different people. Like he's getting really serious about this play, <laughs> y'all. Um, but um, I feel like that super hyper creative brain wouldn't exist if he wasn't just around in a growing up in a household where we're always doing something. We're always pursuing our dreams and our passions. Um, the girls, they'll come to appreciate that more as they get bigger. They're only four now. They just turned four like a month ago. But that that's a big deal to us. And we have to keep coming back to that when it gets hard because it does get hard um, sometimes because you when you start, you are everything. And then you have to gradually build up and hire a team. Now, you know, my husband hired a team, but then it's kind of now he's trying to command his 24, <laughs> manage his time, <laughs> because the clients are coming in so fast and furious. If he doesn't delegate in enough time, now he done told these people he would have their project ready by a certain day, but he got overwhelmed and didn't get delegate in time, then he has to do that project. He stayed mm -hmm. up all night. Like I went to bed the other night and I woke up and the other side of the bed was still made and I was confused. I said, did you get up and make up your side of the bed? He's like, or did you just never get in? I never went to bed. <laughs> I was like, what? You can't do that. You have to go to sleep, you know? So like, now we're navigating that. I'm like, do not do that anymore. Cause let me tell you something. If you go and leave me with all these cheering by myself, you will not rest in peace because I will not let you. <laughs> <laughs> I will not let you. I will hold on to your heel and keep you from crossing over to the other side peacefully. <laughs> I will be nagging your ghost in purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> but that's I mean just being real it, it happens you know it's I know it may look easy but it's work trying to manage kids marriage health well-being let's talk about real quick what are some things we do to help juggle the things and know when we're getting overwhelmed. Well, I think a big sign is when you don't get to go to bed at night. But <laughs> <laughs> what what are some times when you guys have had a come to Jesus moment where it's just like, this is not it. I got to do something different. Who wants to go mm -hmm. first? I'll go. I okay. think um, that happens a lot. So... Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, I make money from my brain and my mouth. Mm -hmm. And I know when my mind is tired. Yes. And I've had to change my schedule. And I was like, oh, I get to change my schedule because I'm in charge. <laughs> but I was seeing clients early. And naturally, I am a my creative juices start in the evenings. Like mm -hmm. I could go to like two o'clock in the morning and be like, oh my God, this is so great. I don't want to stop, but I know I got to go to bed because I got this nine o'clock in the morning appointment. So I I had to come to realize my time, my time, like when am I creative? When am I my best self? When can I knock out tasks? So part of what we do, we have to do the creative side of our work, and then we have to do the task side of our work. And I had to get really clear on when will I do my tasks? When will I do the billing? When will I do the scheduling? When will I send out the emails? And when will I do the post? To the creative side, I got to develop this, and I need to, you know. So I realized that 
managing that and really being honest with myself um, has really helped because once my brain gets tired, I can't do it. And um, I, I, I have to rest my mind. I think I've said that to Shawnee once, like, girl, I got to rest my brain. Like, I'm just so tired. And when I get tired, I get tired. Like yeah. I, I feel like I can't function anymore. So just having that balance that way. Yeah. Good stuff. Miss Shani, what about you? Oh, well, my problem is that I will just keep going, right? Like I don't, even if I'm tired, my brain is already used to working past that point. So I'll just keep going. Mm -hmm. And so what I've had to learn is that sometimes rest is the work. And it was Monique who actually reminded me of that. Um, there is, it's rest is short for restoration, right? Or yes. restorative. And um, I think I am so good at forgetting that. Like even I have to, when we go out on a concierge podcast, I have to bring my executive assistant so she can make sure I eat because mm. I will not eat. I'll just keep going. I won't even get hungry. Like I'll just keep going. And um, sometimes I sit at this desk so long, I don't even realize how long I've been here. Like the sun will like I'll see the sun rise and set and go way past that because I'm just so engrossed in the work um and I know that sounds like wait but where are your children at I do feed them <laughs> <laughs> and I <Sorry. laughs> and I am a homeschooling mom and they're learning things I assure you <laughs> so two things that I've made um big changes on in my life are that I now homeschool my children in the earlier part of the day so mm -hmm. that I can be 100% focused on that. So from like eight to two, we're doing school. And then from two to seven, I am doing work. Now, do I stay here past seven? Yeah. Um, but when I feel myself, I listen to my body. Yeah. And so when I, because I was not doing that before, I was like, shut up. I don't hear you. Keep going. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> just keep doing the things. But now I actually listen to my body. So when I feel tired, I will go to sleep. Or I'll at least sit down away from the computer. Yeah. And maybe that's like, I'm really obsessed now with, not obsessed, but like, I really like those um slime ASR, A ASMR videos where they're like scooping the slime. I don't know what it is about it. Very relaxing to me. <laughs> so I will watch that for like 30 minutes before I go to sleep of just them scooping. But it somehow like disconnects my day mm -hmm. and it just puts me in a good headspace. And then while I'm sleeping, I will listen to um, like the word over my over my life. So, yes, uh, there's videos on YouTube that are like they're playing that, you know, really nice, relaxing music. And it's like a black screen mm -hmm. and it is, you know, verses from the Bible. So I'll listen to that while I'm sleeping. And it's. It's making a difference. It's a work in progress. I'm a work in progress, um, but it's helped. It has helped a lot. Yeah, Amazing. So. Awesome sauce. Miss Shanika, what do you do? Um, when I first started out in business, I used to do the dust till dawn thing. I used to wake up and it was during COVID. So the kids were home. Um, I made sure they got on their schooling, make sure they ate something. And I would just grind away until like two, three o'clock in the morning. Um, what I've noticed is that I have to take care of me. So mm -hmm. what I do is I like, I implement something called like a CEO day where I do mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. I may answer email or a text depends on what it is, if it's important, but I absolutely do nothing. Um, I probably just go to, I go to the gym. I started going to the gym, which has been really relaxing for me. Um, I get my, you know, I, you know, like self-care, like pedicures, manicures, um, I go for a walk every evening um, by myself and just like listen to something positive or listen to an audio books or read a book while I'm walking. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to really implement self-care into becoming a CEO because you can go because when you feel like if you stop, your brain is going to shut off and you're not going to remember the information. So yeah. you kind of get like, oh my God, if I stop, I'm not going to remember it. Or if I stop, I'm, it's not going to get done. How can I stop? When can I stop? And the only thing you're doing is like, sometimes you don't even want to take a bathroom break because you <laughs> feel like if you get up from this spot, that is going to stop. But I had to realize that it's going to be okay and I can take a break and I really have to take care of me, especially my mental. Yes. I really, really have to take care of me. So I start doing those things and it's, it's, it's much better. I don't, when I'm tired, I go to sleep. I love it. 
Yeah, I don't. I, yeah. I try not to push past that. Yeah. That yeah, I I stayed up late last night, but I normally don't. I usually am really geriatric. I'm usually asleep geriatric. watching the back of my eyelids by 10 p.m. But I don't know. Last night I got into a creative flow and I started looking at houses on Trulia. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anybody else does this, but I do this thing where sometimes I just get into this this zone of um, creating my future with my brain. And I get so energized by it that I will pick the house I want on Trulia and then put together a whole Pinterest board for stuff that I want to go in the house and just be gone and I'll look up in two hours and be done past. It doesn't happen often, but when it does happen, y'all, it's like a whole vortex. It's kind of like a vortex where you watch a HGTV episode and then you know how they don't really end like normal shows. It just goes straight into the next episode. So then you'd be like, okay, I'm gonna watch this too. Cause after you see the intro, it's like, I gotta know how this turns out. Yeah. And then it'd be like four hours done past. You've been sitting there watching I used to do that with Law & Order too, but it's kind of like a similar vortex mm -hmm. like that where I'm just like, I'm envisioning and I can see it and I'm excited about it. So last night was that kind of night for me. And I'll allow myself to do it because not every night can't be like that, but it is a form of self-care and it's motivating. And actually for the past couple of nights in a row, my son has come to me saying that he's been dreaming about our new house. So I feel like God is doing something because I ain't tell him nothing about mommy been looking at houses on Trulia too but he's like mommy and I, I dreamed about our new house and it's going to be really big and it has this and I'm like oh okay and it's similar to what I put <laughs> on my little Pinterest board but okay <laughs> um, so for me doing stuff like that reading books journaling those kinds of things help me um, being vulnerable Something that we have talked about, my husband and I, is just kind of how to keep the main thing the main thing. So I was getting really overwhelmed with business. That happens when you are also finishing up a doctorate degree and homeschooling and running a company and wife and, and all the things. <laughs> so he was just like, what are you feeling right now? And I'm just like, I'm just overwhelmed. I always feel like I'm doing too much of something or not doing enough. And it's frustrating. I feel like if I'm doing things with the business and everything is, I'm like, yay, then I feel guilty because it's like, I'm not doing enough with the kids. If I'm doing all of this stuff with the kids and we had a great homeschool lesson today and everything is going great, then I'm like, I can't do nothing with my business today. You know, it's just like, those two extremes were really getting to me. So he started taking some things off my plate. Uh, as you guys noticed, he did all the podcast bookings for this season. You know, I came up with the potential guests that I wanted and he just went and reached out to everybody and set everything up. And we're working now to get me a team to where I don't have to touch all of that back end stuff. I can just come on, do the episodes and do the parts that I shine in doing. Uh, so that has yeah. been helpful to me. Uh, luckily, we found a new babysitter about a couple of months ago. And the way God worked that out, she is a young woman. She is a business owner. She's starting a business where she does content and she kind of is like a social media manager and different things for different people. I would be like, oh, you finna make some money two ways because <laughs> <laughs> you can come watch our kids on these days, but you know, we need you to help us out with this other stuff. So now we're going to try her out with editing some of my content and different things so that my husband doesn't have to do that and all the other things that we do. So that's working it out too. Uh, that's one thing I will say to anybody who's experiencing that same kind of overwhelm. Talk to your circle about it because you never know who, it, it, who around you that you bump into all the time may have the answer to a problem that's driving you nuts. We had talked mm -hmm. about how we were 
our babysitter moved away and we hadn't been able to find a really good one since. And people had been giving us information to one of those care.com kind of companies. And I just didn't feel comfortable with finding anybody to keep my kids from the internet. So <laughs> my husband was kind of voicing his frustration about that at my son's music school. And wouldn't you know, the owner of the doggone music school said, oh, our daughter, you know, has this wonderful babysitter that keeps our grandsons and she's phenomenal. And she, she does this, she does that. Let me give you her info. And that's the person who we found to be our new babysitter, but it would not have happened if it wasn't for a vulnerable moment of conversation mm -hmm. and reaching out and now look at that connection. So reach mm -hmm. out. Y'all soon will be able to reach out to us. The circle of yes! <laughs> We are here for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that's all. Uh, you guys, this has been so fun. And I'm looking at the clock and I'm like, how did that much time go by already? But we're going to kind of <laughs> wrap it up. And I guess, hmm, what note do I want to end on? Because we're talking about women in command this season. That's the theme. Um, so what is a final tip that you all can leave for women who want to feel in command of their life? They're new entrepreneurs or thinking about going into entrepreneurship and they want the freedom that it brings and all the things that we've talked about here. But they're just like, I don't know where to start. How do I take that command? Shanika, we'll start with you. Um, just playful out. Give yourself that. Okay. Give, give yourself the opportunity to playful out. Mm -hmm. um, don't worry about how the puzzle is going to come together. Sometimes we're too worried about the end and we don't enjoy the journey mm -hmm. and we don't grow and develop because we're so worried about the outcome, the outcome, the outcome. And when we're worried about the outcome, we're not giving ourselves the chance to be vulnerable mm -hmm. because we're trying to control the moment and we're trying to control the outcome and we don't give ourselves a chance to play full out. Yeah. yeah. Play full out. Yeah. Play it on yourself. You trust me, you, God is not going to set you up to lose. There's no losing in this game. Love it. There is none. So play full out. Love that. Uh -huh. Love that. Miss Shani, what you got for us? Um, I would say to learn from other pe people's um, mistakes, learn from their triumphs, because their success does leave clues, but do not compare. Your yes. day one, your day 10 is not the same as somebody else's year 10 or year one. Um, so really just learn from them, but do not compare yourself to them. Yeah. Good stuff. Monique. So I think that you have to fall in love with yourself. Mm -hmm. And what do I mean by that? I see, I treat a lot of women in my practice. And there are so many people who do not like what they see in the mirror. Mm -hmm. So how can you command something that you don't like? Ooh, ouch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you got to fall in love with yourself. Mm. You got to connect with who you are. You got to forgive yourself. You got to accept yourself, flaws and all. And you have to recognize that everything that you went through, everything that you've, you're embarrassed about or you're ashamed of, it's made you who you are. Now you have to accept it forgive it and allow it to be your superpower. Allow it to propel you into your next and allow it to connect you to wonderful communities like the CEOs. Mm -hmm. Allow that, but first fall in love with you. Yes. That's beautiful. beautiful. That's beautiful. That's so beautiful. I'm not even going to add nothing to that. That is great. <laughs> fall in love with you. Stop yeah. wishing that God made you like somebody else. Mm -hmm. He knew what he was doing. <laughs> yeah. He made you just how he wanted you to be. 
Love that, love that, love that. Ladies, yeah. thank you all so much for coming on, taking time out of your day to impart into the Victorious Living Solutions audience. You guys check the show notes. We're going to have some information about how you can get connected to this beautiful, wonderful tribe, this circle of CEOs. You don't want to miss out on that. Shani, how can they connect with you if they want to be on an email list to be the first to know when it launches? Well, um, you can email me at hello at shawneealmond.com and I will give you all the information and you can also connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm going to be over on LinkedIn a lot more now so they can connect with me there at my name, Shawnee Almond, and be the first to find out about the circle of she is. <laughs> Yay. Awesome. 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 Well, thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope that this has blessed you. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe and keep living victoriously. Goodbye, everybody. Yeah.